Hello and welcome to this review of Plate Up, developed by It's Happening and currently available for PC via Steam and releasing in October this year for the Nintendo Switch and PS5. I was actually provided with a PC code for the game after playing it during a game expo in the UK called WASD, so a big thanks goes out to the publishers for providing me with that. Now if you look at Plate Up at face value, you'll probably see that it bears a striking resemblance to the Overcooked series. It's a frantic, co-op focused kitchen game where you need to cook dishes and serve customers as efficiently as possible while on a constant looming time limit. I'm a massive fan of this type of game, although I'm not sure that they even have an official title. I guess you could call them Overcooked likes, considering that I'm fairly sure Overcooked was the series that kicked all of them off. But games like Tools Up, Moving Out, The Diner Duo, and now Plate Up are among the best co-op games I've played in recent memory, and they're always a ton of fun. Plate Up initially seems like it's going to be even closer to Overcooked than some of those other games due to its cooking theme. However, it does several things that end up making it quite distinct, and in some ways better than the series it's inspired by. First off, it's structured a little bit like a roguelike. Sounds weird, but stick with me here. You start the game by going into a restaurant which features a randomised design. As you progress, you'll also gain access to randomised kitchen and dining equipment, which you can buy with the currency you earn by serving customers. And if you fail a day by having a customer lose their patience because you're taking too long to serve them or get them seated, you'll go back to day one and lose your previous restaurant due to it getting getting closed down. What stops this becoming too irritating though is the way that you're constantly unlocking new recipes and locations for your future restaurants, which become accessible the higher your experience level gets. So while you do lose specific restaurants and all of the equipment in them, you do have an overarching experience meter, so it's not like you're not making any progress at all. The new locations where you can build your restaurants will even affect the gameplay in several ways, with the snowy areas making people lose patience faster if they're waiting outside to be seated because it's so cold. Unlike other games in this style, things are actually a lot less chaotic here. While Overcooked is more arcade like with its level by level design, and probably a little bit more zany with its environments featuring obstacles and other dynamic elements, Plate Up gives you a lot more control over your environment, which almost makes it feel more like a simulator. You pick from a preset kitchen and dining room layout, but within those confines you can move everything around to suit your needs. You can move dining tables to optimal locations to see as many people as possible, you can move hobs and ovens to be able to quickly whack stuff in and take it out before it burns, and you can even move the sinks, counters and food supplies. After every day of working in the restaurant, you're provided with the plans to make a variety of randomised equipment, however each of these will cost a certain amount of money which you might not have yet. You can save a single one of these plans in a filing cabinet in order to access it later on, but other than that you'll lose access to them once you decide to move on to the next day. So this this introduces an element of strategy and mixes things up throughout your different runs because certain recipes might benefit from different equipment, and certain pieces of equipment might not even appear at all on certain runs. After a while you'll gain a star rating on the restaurant and gain access to decorative elements which allow you to customise your experience even more. You can choose to become more of a fast food type place where there's less variety on the menu but the service has to be faster, or you can become a more classy joint where there's a bigger and more complicated menu but you're given slightly more leeway with the customers being more patient. This ties into the decorations because you're given completely different flooring, wallpaper, paper and ornaments depending on what type of restaurant you choose to become, and as you add more decorations you gain access to more passive perks like having guests clean up after themselves, or taking longer to decide what to order. I absolutely love all of this, the way that you can completely customise the restaurant and each playthrough feels completely different both cosmetically and mechanically due to both your choices and the randomised elements. It keeps it feeling fresh and you can lose 
hours and hours because you're always just thinking, oh, one more go, maybe this time if we become a coffee shop and get a sponge to clean up faster, we'll do better. Despite the gameplay loop being awesome though, there are a couple of things that I would like to see improved. First of all, I found it a little bit weird how the Cosmetic Sphere character were all unlocked from the very start of the game. I think this would be better if you actually unlocked stuff by playing, maybe you could spend your surplus money made from previous restaurants to go to a clothes shop or something. And also, despite there being a good amount of hats to wear, I feel like the other cosmetic options are a little bit lacking. We need more colours and more options for what to wear on our bodies too. As it stands, there's only an apron, chef outfit and a waiter costume, which is fine, but adding more wouldn't hurt. Elements of the UI can also be a little bit clumsy, everything is a little bit too zoomed out at times, especially in the character customization menu, and when you're going through all of the plans for new equipment in your restaurant, it can look very overwhelming when you're running around trying to organise everything and massive text boxes keep popping up whenever you walk over something. This is even more extreme when you add in another player and there's two people running around activating text boxes. However, I don't want to complain too much because what we have here is incredible. If you're a fan of Overcooked or any similar games, or even if you're just looking for a new co-op game in general, then this is definitely worth your time. I really like the elements of Plate Up that are almost more simulator-like. The fact you have control over what each of your restaurants look like and how they operate makes you grow attached to your creations. And because of all of the additional little details, like even being able to name your establishment, the stakes grow ever higher the further into the game you get and the more equipment, decorations and recipes you gain access to, only to risk losing it all by starting the next day. The co Co-op is handled quite differently in Plate Up compared to other games in this style too. Whereas in Overcooked, every player needs to get stuck in with every element of the cooking and cleaning process in order to get everything done on time and in the right order, Plate Up is a bit less hectic and seems to be designed around each player having a set role that they need to focus on. The way that we played the game is that for each of our restaurants, one player was in charge of the kitchen and the other was in charge of the dining area. The the worry here would be that the person in the kitchen would have way more to do than the other person, however I actually think that this has been balanced really well. With you unlocking items for the dining room like candles, breadsticks and napkins which you need to get onto the tables as quickly as possible to give you added benefits like more patience and having less mess. As well as actually taking people's orders in the first place, you also need to clear the tables after customers have finished eating because otherwise people won't sit down and queues will start to build up outside. There's a great balancing act you need to do where you need to focus on all the right elements at the right times or you'll slip up and too many orders will come in at the same time and you'll overload the kitchen. Of course, you can play the game single player too and while this is pretty fun, it just loses a bit of its charm when it doesn't have that element of screaming at your partner for some carrot soup. There's also some impressive things going on behind the scenes here too, like the fact it's gonna offer cross-platform online multiplayer, so you'll be able to play the Switch version with someone on PC. This is great for making the multiplayer as convenient as possible, but it's also a good way to keep the pool of players as high as possible too. There's also some really nice streaming integration, where you can be playing the game on Twitch and have people in chat order a certain type of food, and after doing so, a character with their Twitch handle will walk into the restaurant in the game. That's so, so cool and honestly a detail that they didn't need to add, but I'm really glad it's there nonetheless. It builds up a really nice community around the game and you can get involved even if you aren't playing it yourself. Another thing that I'll say is that I did find this to be much easier than Overcooked. This is partially due to the fact that you have more control over your environment, whereas Overcooked is designed to take that control away from you. It's just much less hectic, so if you're looking for something to play with someone who doesn't normally play games, or maybe someone a little bit younger, this could be perfect for you. 
But even if you're an overcooked expert, there's so many different mechanics that offer a completely different spin on a similar concept, and I'm sure you'll have a blast playing it too. But let me know what you think, have you already played Plate Up? Do you plan on picking it up on Switch or PS5 when it releases soon? And what do you think a good name for this style of game would be? Is Overcooked like good enough, or should we go with Multitaskers or something? As always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to see more stuff like this coming soon, and I'll see you next time. Bye!